Want a more immersive experience? Thrustmaster T150 Force Feedback Racing Wheel. Official PS3 and PS4 licenses and also PC compatible. Rubber coated wheel grips. 1080 degrees of rotation. Adjustable force feedback. Large metal sequential pad. Optimized ergonomic design. Mixed belt pulley and gear system. Thrustmaster. Enter into the real driving world. A good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome to round 7 of the Formula Sim Racing Pro Championship here from the beautiful Spa Francorchamps uh, circuit at uh, Belgium or in Belgium I should say. My name is Felix van Delft. I am joined today once again by Peter Schultz. Hi Felix, how are you? Hi Peter, I'm, uh, I'm doing great. I'm uh, really excited for this race. Uh, drivers are going to be driving 33 laps around the uh, around the track here and it's going to be a very exciting race spa always brings great racing here in fsr we've seen that over the years um but the qualifying session has just started so let's uh, let's take a look at how the drivers are doing uh, so far yeah we have a new name on top right now provisional propositions by sol Sucks. I think he's called um, 39.9. I don't think we've seen him before in Pro and FSR, so um, yeah, new driver, pretty good pace so far. Behind him we have Tom Lambert, Roma Tessing, two names we've seen at the front in the last two races. And also a new guy in P5, Jody Sears. Yeah, that's it's great to see uh, some new guys uh, getting to the top of the leaderboards here. Uh, as we say that though, some of the uh, Guys that have been around just uh, set a good lap. Gerald de Vries with the 39.694. Nice lap time there for Gerlof. Yeah, and um, looks like Joao Pitar has went purple in sector one, so I guess you can take a look at him. 
that. Let's do that. He's just uh, exiting the corner with no name. Coming up to Puhon in qualifying. The car scored extremely quick through here. Down to sixth gear, flat on the power again. Incredible amounts of grip these cars have. Now through the chicane section of sector two. That Rex car gets nicely out of the way there. Now Stavolo onto the long back straight. Exit is very important there if you want to get a, a good run. Now let's hope this car gets out of the way nicely there. Now Blanchimont of course. Flat out through there, uh, should be flat out as well in the race. Then breaking hard for the bus stop chicane. Difficult on exit here, car can be a bit slippery, but he makes it stick. And uh, he doesn't uh, do that much of a lap time. Second, uh, second sector was really uh, not good, 9 tenths, almost a second slower than what Geil of the Wrist did. Uh, but he had two purple sectors, so... The wings on uh, on the car of the ACR drivers, 354 kilometers an hour of top speed, um, really don't seem to be working in the second sector. No, they don't. And we have like two or three big straights here, but um, it's not always worth it to just go low wings to be fast on the straight, because if you go low wings, you have no downforce in the middle part of the track and lose much, way too much time there. See our current championship leader Luca Di Emilio is on hard lap as well. Just coming up to plunge him on a second. His sector so far doesn't look too bad, but also not the best. Um, let's see. Good breaking into the bus stop chicane. Looks very tight. He needs a good exit out of here, good traction, and then he might be able to set a time in the top 10. Let's see. He went second fastest. Yeah. Slightly slower oh, yeah, yeah. than uh, Geil of the Vries for now. So nicely done there by Luca D'Amelio, championship leader of course. Say that Matthew Tucson goes up to P10. Uh, with 12 minutes remaining in the session. Obviously the drivers all have 12 laps to uh, complete. Uh, which means uh, effectively 4 qualifying laps. Because it also counts the in-lap and the out-lap of your qualifying laps and uh, so far most people have just done one lap only Kostas Kelnamatis has done two laps so far so I think nearly everyone out of the top 10 is currently on an out lap if i see this correctly galov is just starting his lap actually going through yeah cameron is right just entering lacombe and it's interesting to see yeah, from the top three galov the trees and cameron watcher seem to be running a bit of lower wing being fast in sector one and sector three but then look at emilio has a bit of a bit of fire wing there and um, gained like six tenths in sector two alone on them yeah yeah, it's gonna be interesting in the, in the race because uh, even if Gerloff manages to put himself in pole position, um, will he be able to fend off Luca D'Amelio in sector two enough to make sure that it's top speed? Oh, Cameron Roger makes a mistake in the chicane. Uh, just touch the touch the gravel there, and uh, well, into the barrier he goes. Uh, now let's see how his teammate is doing. Gerloff de Vries, first sector wasn't. Too special. Second sector. Uh, okay. 42.6 personal improvement. Should be able to uh, get a nice lap time in, in there with that uh, sector too. Let's see though. A sub chicane is going to be important for him. In the power he goes. Let's see what it's going to be. Not an improvement. No, not an improvement. Uh, he went 4,000 slower than his lap before. That's uh, at least consistently uh, at the same pace. Nice to see. In the oh, meantime, Colomado Sarantides puts himself in provisional pole position with a 39.573 here. 
with an amazing sector uh, sector two. His top speed is only 337 kilometers an hour, but his sector two was uh, eight tenths quicker than what Gerlof de Vries did on his last lap. So uh, great job there from the Greek driver, putting himself on a really nice spot, at least for now here in the qualifying session. Yeah, and the new driver saw it sucks, also managed to go into P3 for the moment. And uh, Luca Di Melio uh, on a hot lap, just about to finish the second sector. Sector one time wasn't too bad, three times faster than Olimaros. Oh, and he clips the curb and spins the car. A bit over aggressive there from Luca. Into Puha. Yeah. That's not And Tom Lambert's purples. New provision pole, 39.4. This was... Oh, he went super fast into yeah. Sector 3. Sector 3 second... really quickly. Yeah, second sector was 7 tenths slower than Polamaros, and he's still 1 tenth up on him. Yeah. Yeah, it's really interesting to see here the two different types of setups. Still working out in qualifying, still being close to each other in qualifying. Even though the wing settings are so, uh, so much uh, different. Top speed differs. Over 10 kilometers an hour between these guys. Now, Costas Kalamatis is on a personal improvement in the first two sectors. Let's see what he can do in the last sector. Improves his time up to P9, he goes for now. So, the two Greek drivers. Showing that they have some pace here today. Which is great to see, of course. Patiziano Brioni, race winner in the Pro Championship. He is on an outlap, I believe. Yeah. He is romanticing in the meantime. Personal sector, uh, personal best sector 2. Going into the bus stop now. A bit slow there, I would say, to the bus stop. Took a bit too much curb. Let's see if he improves. He P3. improves to P3 actually. Yeah. Good last sector as well for Roma. Alatz Galliar on a lap. At the moment he's in P12. His first sector wasn't the best. Second sector is gonna be important for him. He has a bit higher wing compared to the like the flag drivers at the top of the field for now. The second sector was a bit better, 42.3. Now his last sector is gonna be very important if he wants to improve his lap time. Don't make any mistakes on the braking for the bus stop chicane here. Oh, and he misses the inside apex a bit. That yeah, is gonna lose him a bit of time, surely. Coming to the line, not an improvement for Balat. And for the Maros, Garantides is on a lap once again. His first sector, 30.356. Slower than his personal best, and I think even slower than... Um, and what he did last time around, I'm not sure. Anyway, second sector is the place where they gain their time. With their higher wing settings, now the flag to flag driver in front. Hopefully gets out of the way nicely, yeah. Second sector, what is it going to be for Polar Maros? 41.951, a bit slower than his personal best again, so his last sector is going to be important. Perhaps there's some time to gain in the bus stop chicane for him. Oh, and Salt Sucks just went on Persian and Paul by one thousandth of a second. Wow, it's actually saying it's the exact same time here for, for me on the live timing. As uh, Polomaros made a mistake there in the bus stop chicane. That's his lap gone. And he has only got one try left. But at the moment... Um, my timing screen says that they have oh. the exact same time, but I'm guessing yeah. uh, 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 Tsuks won it on the 
not the thousands, but the millions of a second. Yeah, he or must have went faster because yeah. if it would have been the same time, Tom Lombards would have been in front because yeah. he set the time mm -hmm. earlier. Exactly. Um, Tom Lombards was um, personal best sector too, but abandoned after the bus stops because his last sector wasn't the best. He decides to abandon his lap. Or maybe he saw it that he cut and abandoned. Perhaps, That's yeah. also, might also be a possibility. Um, Mukulopini, personal best sector one. Uh, not a good sector two. Only a 42.888. Let's see if he's fast enough in the third sector to improve further. Coming into the bus stop now. Good breaking hits the apex of the first chicane, apex of the second. Good acceleration out of the bus stop. And he improves by half ten, a half a tenth, but down the group one position, I think. No, don't think so either. So Cameron Roger on a lap, about to finish his lap. Improvement in sector two. Um, last sector is going to be important. And goes up to P3, only 9 hundredths of a second slower than uh, Zotsuks at the moment. Jordi Spears is also on the lap. Just exited, no name, corner with no name. Car seems pretty stable through here. Ooh, has a bit of a mistake through Stavolo though. Had to go uh, down the gears to get the car turned in. Surely that's not going to help him on the exit here. Second sector wasn't the best either. Now last corner. Breaking hard for the bus stop chicane. It's the inside apex nicely. On the power he goes, but I think that Stavolo just did it for him. He proves up to P11, but uh, clearly there's some time to gain there for him. But I don't think he has the laps left to go for an improvement, as that was his last lap. I look at Amelio in sector 2 at the moment. Improved his first sector. Of course, we know that he is runner running slightly higher wings compared to uh, the guys in front. So it's going to be very important what he does in the second sector. Second sector, 42.2. So, should be an improvement of his lap time. Let's see what it's going to be, though. This last corner is going to be very important for him. This is his last lap. Coming out of the last corner on the power he goes. DRS wide open to the line. And it's provisional pole position. 139.367. A really nice lap there by Luca D'Amelio. With a stunning sector two. With the slightly higher wings. Now most drivers are coming to the... Start finish line to start their last laps. Air of the Vries was one of the first to cross that line. Keep an eye out on him. Down the long camel straight he goes. First sector for Air of the Vries is a 29.884. Not a personal improvement, but still a good sector two, two tenths quicker than what look at Amelio did in sector one. Sorry, I should say. Now sector two, we know that the flag to flag drivers are struggling there with their lower wings. Uhon down to seventh, slight bit of oversteer there, had to correct, but the lift off the throttle slightly. That's not going to help him in sector two. You can see the car just understeering through this sector. 
really struggling to find grip. Now, let's see what it was this sector 2 for. Hell of the Freeze. 42.5, 3 tenths slower than we look at Amelio did now. He's going to have to find at least 1 tenth here in this last sector compared to Luca D'Amelio or else he won't be able to uh, grab that pole position misses the apex slightly in the last corner and spins the car around that's his lap gone his qualifying gone Colomado Sarantides is on for a purple sector 2 41.899 there this is gonna be a very important last corner for Polomados. He gained quite a lot of time in sector 2. Now out of the last corner, DRS open. What is it going to be for Polomaros? Not okay. an improvement. Last sector did it for him. You know, all the other drivers in the top 5 all made mistakes. So it sucks had to abandon his lap Kevin Roger as well. Yep, Ivan Leonov improves up to P10. And now the last driver to finish his lap is Edward Batala, but he goes into the pit lane. And that is... Uh, Qualifying over and we have Luca D'Amelio, championship leader of the Pro Championship. Starting from pole position with right behind him, Todd Sooks and Tom Labert right next to, uh, or right behind him with Cameron Roger next to him. So, uh, great qualifying session once again and it's very exciting to see that uh, the different types of wings um, are working in qualifying. Uh, let's see how it uh, works out in the race. Um, if it's going to be a uh, an overtaking fest with the uh, flag to flag drivers having easy overtaking in uh, sector 1 and sector 3, but then struggling a little bit more in sector 2. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what, what happens there. If Luca D'Amelio is able to, uh, to run away, perhaps slightly in uh, sector 2 and get a gap to the guys behind him. Anyway... Um, we're going to go for a uh, small five minute break. We will be uh, back with you um, and we will discuss the tire strategies and the strategies that uh, drivers might be taking here in this race. When we get back, we will be going for the race for 33 laps here in the Pro Championship. Until then, grab a cup of coffee and uh, we will be right back. Hey man, I got that new TMX Thrustmaster wheel. It's going down. <laughs> Xbox One? I can't wait to play when I get home. Yo, let me play? Uh, yeah. I'll have to play first. Yeah. You know, I'll race it for it. So I have a hand.
It has been an absolutely astonishing season. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are getting ready for round seven of the Pro Championship here in Belgium. Uh, for the guys that have missed it, or have missed the qualifying session, I should say, Luca D'Amelio will be starting from pole position here today. Championship leader. Let's uh, quickly go through that championship standings at the moment. So Luca D'Amelio leading the championship with 88 points. Only seven points behind him, it's Tom Oldermenger, then only um, four points behind him, it's Ivan Leonov in third, then Cameron Roger in fourth with 71 points, then Keen White with 70, uh, Tiziano Brioni with 67, Hell of the Vries with 61, Mirko Lopini with 37, Kostas Galanamatis with 32, and Francesco Moranto with 30 points rounding up the top 10 of the championship standings. And... Um, yeah, it's really uh, quite tight in the standings at the moment. I mean, anyone from uh, Cameron Roger um, to Tiziano Brioni can take the lead here. Uh, for example, if Luca D'Amelio and Tom Oldermenger don't manage to finish this race. So, Pro Championship really close so far. And uh, let's hope the drivers show on track that it also still is close racing on track. Um... So, let's uh, take a look at the warm-up session. At the moment, leading the session is Ivan Leonov with a 44.8. Like I always say, people that uh, watch the Formula Sim Racing broadcast a little bit more often have to take the warm-up times with a little bit of a grain of salt. Obviously, drivers can be pushing a bit harder on the tires than they would be actually in the race. Could be running a bit more fuel than they actually would be in the race who knows perhaps they are running uh, DRS every single um, DRS straight which they probably won't be in the race if they have clean air and not uh, are not within a second of the car in front of them um, however the tires the drivers are able to use here today are the super soft the soft and the medium tires I think um, we're most likely gonna uh, see the super soft and the soft most around this track. Obviously, the top 10 drivers have to start with the super softs because they qualified on that tire. Um, and we will probably see down the top 10 a couple of guys starting on the soft or medium tires. Um, I expect it to be either a two-stop or a one-stop race here in pro. Um, I'm gonna have to see... Drivers that run a bit lower wing obviously will have a bit more higher or a bit higher tire wear because they will be asking a bit more from the tires. So we're going to have to wait and see how that all pans out. The warm up session has officially ended and uh, the drivers will be getting ready to start this race. Now, obviously, like we said already in the qualifying session, or like we've seen in the qualifying session, the uh, uh, the difference in top speed between the drivers is actually pretty high uh, here at Spa. Um, look at Emilio from the top of my head at 344 kilometers an hour. However, Cameron Roger had close to 351 kilometers an hour down the straight. So. Cameron will be starting in P4. Perhaps if he gets a good tow out of the uh, first couple of uh, corners, might be able to get him or might be able to make a move down the camel straight in the first couple of laps. However, formation lap is underway. Luca Amelio running the field from now. On your screens, you will be seeing everybody with hard tires. That is just a slight. Uh, glitch in the R Factor 2 software. They should be updated soon. So let's run down the top 10 uh, real quick. Once again, look at Amelio. Championship leader will be starting from pole position. Behind him, 
we have Totsuk, then Lombard, Lombard, sorry, Amron Roger MP4, Palomara Sanantides uh, with a very impressive fifth place in qualifying, Komodo Menger second in the championship from P6, then Rumatissing from P7, Mirko Lupini in P8, Ivan Leonov in P9, and Tiziano Brioni all the way down in P10. Then Geil of the Vries starting from P11 with behind him Jordi Zwiers. Then Matthew Tusen in P13. And Kostas Galanamatis in P14. Then Balaz Gadiar in P15. Eduard Batala P16. Todor de Pangev in P17. Thomas Lenz down in P18. David Santos in P19. And we have Zarov in P20. Then Miles Weeway P21. Michael Wilson in P22. Jao Pitaes all the way down in P23. But I believe he has. Um, uh, he will be starting from the pit lane. Then Mikhailo Vicentovic, P24. Uh, Indrek Remet also starting from the pit lane. And Gerard Batala, P26. And uh, Eugene van Lokenberg, Bojan Bogdanov. Jan Motinska, Bosnika, sorry. Uh, starting from the pit lane. And last on the grid today will be Lawrence Doherty. With the halo on his car. Perhaps it will bring him good luck today. Around the spa circuit. We will have to see. Now look at Amelio coming through Blanchimo. Probably warming up the brakes. Warming up his front tire slightly. Making sure everything is set for the race. Making sure the car is in optimal condition. I believe Tiziano Brioni will, all, will also be starting from the pit lane. Hope everybody is ready in the chat watching as well. This will be a 33 lap race. Uh, well, probably won't be one of the longest uh, races time wise. It's a relatively short one. However... All the drivers are starting to line up on their grid slots. As we wait eagerly for the lights to come on or come on and then come out again. Now eagerly waiting. Everybody lined up on their grid slots. Lights are coming on. We have five lights. And we are racing here for round seven of the Pro Championship. It's been a good start for Boyan Bokta. Or sorry, for, um, um, for Totsuk. And he is already around the outside of Luca D'Amelio. Side by side will they be going through a ruse. This is going to be a hectic. Cameron Roger right behind him in P3. Will be trying to make the move. Probably down Camel straight with his lower wings. Let's see what he can do. Through the slipstream he goes. Look at Amelio trying to defend his position. This is a bit of a hectic start of this race. Side by side Cameron Roger goes into the corner first. But look at Amelio is not giving up. A bit of wheel banging through Lacan there. Still side by side. Bit more of wheel banging. Cameron goes off into the gravel. Almost hits his teammate there. As Tom Labert tried to capitalize on Cameron's little off into the gravel trap. Now still side by side. Thomas, uh, Tom Lambert and Cameron Roger. But seems that Cameron Roger has now solidified his second place. At least for now. And Luca D'Amelio will be trying to increase the gap now in sector 2 with his uh, higher wings. But what a start of this race. Hectic start and I'm sure this won't be the end of it. Yeah, amazing start there. Um, I think it was pretty clean from what I've seen. Um, 
Cameron, we see how good the low wings are on the straights, but now Cameron is like already one second behind Luca de Emilio, only going through the second sector. So um, I think this will will be a little bit the story um, story of this race. The low low wing runner will make moves on the on the straights, and then the high wing runners will come back into the second sector. Yeah, I think you're right there. Um, let's have a look. Uh, what drivers are running the soft tire? Most drivers that started from outside of the top 10 are running the soft tire here. Uh, two drivers, Jao Pitais and Boyan Bogdanov, on the medium tire. So we're going to have to keep an eye out on those drivers, see what they can do. Tom Oldemenger is lining himself up for a pass on Todd Suk. Now look at this, Kevin Roger already on the rear attacking Luca Di Melio after being with second down just two corners ago. And I think this time around he will make the move stick. He's already had before the braking zone. Does Luca break later? No, he doesn't. Cameron is up into the lead. Yeah, nice move there from Cameron. Would you look at Amelio? Is gonna be gonna be focusing on this sector two now because he knows that he's quicker through there. But obviously he has the car in car of Cameron Roger in front of him now, which will mean it won't be as easy for him uh, as he has a bit of a bad run through the corner with no name. Well, Tom Ondermenger managed to get past Totsuk there on the camel straight. We have already got two DNFs here in the first couple of laps. Michael Wilson and Dimitri Zarov out of this race. Now look at Amelio. Didn't really get much closer to Cameron Roger in the second sector. And now he's going to have to watch out for Tom Laberts. Laberts even. Because Tom also has a bit lower wings. And he's going to try to get past Luke and Amelio as well. Now Tom will have DRS. I believe Luke and Amelio also will have DRS. So he will be able to get a bit more top speed than he would usually have. Now let's see what, what the top speed is that Tom Lombards gets to. It's just see. It's almost like Luca D'Amelio standing still before he opened his DRS there. Tom Lombards gets up to 339 kilometers an hour on the back straight. Cameron Roger now 1.2 seconds in front. Yeah, you could see how Cameron was um, opening the gap to Luca, even though Luca was uh, driving with DRS. So Luca's slower with DRS than Cameron without DRS. Yeah. Now, in the midfield, Gerlof de Vries, Kostos Gallinamatis, Mirko Lupini, Ivan Leonov are all battling. Trying to get some or gain some positions. All fairly close. Kostos Gallinamatis seems to be really close on the gearbox of Mirko Lupini. And. The same goes for Mirko Lupini on Ivan Leonov and Ivan Leonov on Jordi Zwiers in front of him. Now, coming out of Stavolo, is there going to be anyone that has a bit of a toe of Stas Galanamatis perhaps? He doesn't have the top speed though. You can just see that he hits that wall of air and just doesn't get any closer to the ACR car. Now perhaps with a bit of DRS, Tom Lombert is going to get close to Luca at Amelio. So let's take a look there. Look at Amelio. Yeah, for sure. With this top speed, he's never going to be able to fend off Tom Lombert here through a rouge down the camel straight. He's already passed before the halfway point of the uh, camel straight. Look at Amelio. Realizing now that he's gonna have to fight a bit harder if he wants to uh, keep the top 10 here with his top speed. Or keep the top uh, top 3 here, sorry. Now Costas Galanomates wasn't able to get past Mirko Lupini. Or was he? Yes, he was. He was able to get past Mirko Lupini. 
My apologies. Tires. Both SCR drivers that started from the pit lane starting to make their way through the field. Both on the medium tires, I believe. We'll be trying to uh, go for a very long first step, probably for the one stop here in this race. See if they can uh, gain some position by doing that. Now, battle for P7. Gold Sooks, Jordi Zwiers, Ivan Leonov, all really close. And right behind them also Mirko Lupini, Gerald de Vries and Balaz Galliard. Now let's see what happens here first. Jordi Zwiers going to go around the outside of Gold Sooks. Now Ivan Leonov closing in as well rapidly. Goes for the inside of Lacombe. Side by side they still are. Gold Sook goes a, a bit wide. Cuts the track slightly, but I don't think that was um, too much of an illegal move. He didn't gain too much time by doing so. Ivan Leonov is going to have to focus and try again somewhere else. Hello, the Vries. Closing into the... Uh, oh, 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 I think Ivan just hit a... Was it a hidden... It was either, either a hidden wall or... Oh no, I think it was Salt Sucks um, having a leg spike or a screen freeze. Let's go for a replay there. Um, that looked uh, interesting from my point of view. Um... Let's see. Oh yeah. Uh, was it a lag issue? Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, it was. Slightly further back. If you can. So, here from the track. Yeah, lag issue from uh, from uh, Zoltsuk. Just uh, a lag back into the uh, way of Ivan Leonov. And. Uh, Went for a little journey into the air. Tower of Airlines reborn. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's really unfortunate. Also for Ivan Leonov, obviously. He is getting closer to the back of Tom Oldermanger. And Tom Oldermanger. Is also getting closer to the back of uh, Luca D'Amelio. Luca D'Amelio starting to fall back slightly here, even with his higher wings. Not really able to keep up the pace in the second sector. Looks like um, Luca manages to to keep pace with Tom Lambert. Actually, he's only like a second behind them, but there's no under attack from Tom Olmenger down the camera straight. He's trying to defend on the inside. Tom Olmenger goes for the inside move and makes it stick. Um, it looks like for now Luca's higher wing setup is not working. Yeah, indeed, not really working out 
And he's not able to keep the keep the pace in sector two to compensate for the lack of pace he has in sector one and three. Now Gerlof de Vries also got past uh, Mirko Lupini down the camel straight. And for now it's uh, a good race for Cameron Roger. Uh, leading by almost uh, three seconds, two and a half seconds to Tom Lambert. Driving a solid race so far. However, there is still 27 laps to go. So anything can still happen. Is already on the pressure of Formado Sanantides now as well. Now, let's see if Luca will be able to uh, keep this position. Wow, Polomaros extremely close down. <laughs> down uh, a ruse up to Radion. They made contact even on the top of Radion. And now down the camel straight. Palomaros not really able to make the move, but that looked really, really close to disaster there. Let's see if I can get a replay of that. Unfortunately, don't think so. Perhaps you can. Here we are, let's go a bit further back. There we go. On board. Oh, really close to a disaster there. Slight contact made. Not too bad though, but Polomaros didn't have the top speed to get past uh, Luca de Medio there. Samotidis is going to be trying again. Ooh, Cameron Roger into the pit lane. Sorry, uh, for a second I thought something happened there. Lap 9, first stop for Cameron Roger onto the softs. He goes, surely he's on a two stop then. Yeah, lap 8 actually, end of lap 8. Um, it must be two stop. There's no way I think he can take these softs to yeah. 25 laps. If it were mediums, I don't know. Uh, I would have like doubt it slightly but no surely on softs he won't be able to do that comes uh rejoins the track right in front of Matthew Tucson he's gonna have to watch out uh Tom Oldermenger oh Tom Oldermenger and Tom Lambert have made contact Ooh, also some contact with Polomaro Sanantides on the rejoin chaos here in lap nine of the race just as the leader came into the pit Tom Lambert's going slow he still Looks has his like front wing it looks like Thomas massive damage again, like in Hockenheim. Oh, yeah. Tomato Sonantides also without a front wing. Let's see if we can find the replay of what happened there. Ooh, what happened there? Here we go. So, Mollemenger went to go for the move on the outside of Lecombe. Then, oh, he had some sort of glitch with the curb. And then Tom Lombards on the rejoin hit Luca D'Amelio. And then, in turn, hit Polomaro Sanantides. They couldn't do anything about it, really. Just once again a reckless rejoin by somebody here in the Pro Championship. And that caused probably Polomaro Sanantides valuable points.
Now we're huh. fishing, going to make the move on Luca D'Amelio around the outside of Lecomb. Goes a bit wide there, off the track. Not sure if that's totally I legal. Know. Roma should give the place back, otherwise yeah. um, he might get a penalty. That was a bit naughty from uh, Rumatissing. For now, it doesn't seem that he's going to give the position back. Yes, he is. Giving the position back now, making sure Tom Oldermanger doesn't get past. And I have to watch out down the camera straight though, because Tom Oldermanger is looking like he can uh, eat somebody alive. And Rudy Smear is also right behind him. Rudy Smear started on the soft tire, I believe. He did, and, yeah. Uh, now, already up to P4. Not too bad. Ooh, oh, Tom Oldermanger goes wide. That is a P4. Jordi Swiers, yes it is. So nicely done there by the Flector driver as Tom Oldermanger goes into the pit lane. And low in storage, he had a big of crit. Started last on the grid and is already up to P7. So good yeah. race for him so far. Indeed. Now rheumatizing. He's gonna try to make the move and look at Amelio here. Down the camel straight. More top speed. Once again, look at Amelio sitting duck. Nothing you can really do. Balas Galliar started to get in front of Cameron Roger, or I should say Cameron Roger is starting to catch up to the back of the uh, field now. Um, something he probably doesn't want too much because he will be losing time if he catches up to these guys and doesn't get past quick enough. Especially because Balas Galliar started on the soft tire, probably won't be pitting for a few laps from now. Jordi Suez is all over the back of Luca Di Emilio now. Already trying to make the move to the bus stop. Um, yeah, I think you should just trade for the DS zone, really. Um, Jordi so far doing a really good race on the soft tires. And I think Roma and Luca are saying not too long, they they are thinking about the one stop, I would say. Here we go. Rudy's Vias and Luca D'Amelio. Through a race up to Radion. Luca D'Amelio once again. No top speed, nothing he can do about it. Starting from pole position. And after 12 laps, pretty much. Um, oh, and Lowen started the left again. What happened? Uh, oh. Disconnection or something? Let's have a look at the replay. Oh, he oh. had a moment in Arush and went into the wall. See if I can find it. Another one. Yeah, he was in the slipstream of his teammate, Nicolo Pini. And he just... Huh? He just didn't steer or something. No, it, his car twitched a bit. I think he had like some some random oversteer just before he went over the over the hill. Let's see slow motion here. His car suddenly went to the right, at least that's how it looked for me. Yeah. Slight bit of oversteer, you can see it. Tries to correct it. But overcorrects it and then just ends up hitting the wall. End of the race for Lawrence there. Mercolopini and Luca Di Emilio are pitting. 
I think that's a bit too early for a one stop, unless Luca takes the medium tires. Thomas Lenz and Polomaro Santidis. Three Costas, Costas, Galamatis. Vettel and Luca D'Amelio indeed into the pit lane. Uh, the tires is going on too. The super shots again, I think. Oh, Another soft, sorry. Yeah, and Mirko on uh, mediums. Um, Luca's actually in a bad position here. He is right behind three guys battling, and his top speed is not good. So mm -hmm. the chances of him being able to overtake are pretty low. So um, unless these three in front of him will pit soon, he will lose a massive amount of time. Yeah, totally agree. 20 laps remaining in this race. Not looking very bright for Luca D'Amelio after he started from pole position. I think virtually he is down in P7 or something. Yeah. Of course, we're going to have to see what the uh, soft runners are going to do, uh, especially Jordi Zwiers. Because he has been doing a, a great job so far in his first stint. Look at Amelio is closing in on Thomas Lenz. Uh, top speed gonna be enough to make uh, make a move. At least not for now. And Gallop the reason to the pits in lap 12. Yeah, Balaz Galliar as well. Interestingly. Um, Gallop did 12 laps on the supers, while Balash did 12 laps on the softs. Oh wow. Now look at Emilio making the move before La Source, or in La Source. That's a really bad idea for the top Lenz speed. has the top speed, and he will have yeah. the DRS now as well. He's already uh, on his gearbox through a rouge. Yeah, I don't think Luca has really uh, thought that through. Here we go, Thomas Lenz. Around him, look at Emilio trying all he can, but just gets fast on top speed once again. He would have thought he would have realized by now that uh, if, if somebody's uh, less than a second behind him, he's gonna have a bad time down the camel straight. But now he's just losing even more valuable time here behind Thomas Lenz, and um, there's gonna be some sort of miracle that's gonna happen if he wants to still win this race. Um, if not get on the podium. Oh, makes a move down the inside of Puon. Thomas Lenz totally didn't expect that, but uh, managed to avoid any contact there. But uh, a very ballsy move there by uh, Luca D'Amelio. Yeah, up front we can see um, Jordi Spheres now in the DS but no, that's on Roma pits anyway, so... Oh no, Roma don't go into the wall. I think Roma just clipped the wall on Pedenci. If we can uh, find a replay of that. Oh, this was very close. Good entry of Rheumatising. Let's see. Ooh. It was very close indeed. Um, I totally see. And... Oh, Roma comes into a big train of cars. He's side by side with Costas Galvanomatis just before Rouge. He lifts off doing the smart move there, but he probably won't have the rest, depending on where the dejection line is. Let's see. Oh no, he does. Um, so Roma is around five seconds ahead of Luca Di Emilio right now, after the pit stop cycle. Oh, a bit of contact with Roman Costas there, but Roma makes the move stick. Now he has uh, Tiziano Burioni and Tom Oldmenger in front of him, who actually... Uh, I think at least Tom Oldmenger undercut Roma Tissing during the pits of phase. Yeah. Um, well, Tom Oldmenger was top, top 5 already. Um, yeah. Not sure Roman was, but... Uh, um, it appeared that he gained some time on Rumor, for sure. That's... Uh, uh, yeah. I think the same for, uh, same for Joao. He was behind Roma, I'm pretty sure, and is ahead now after the pit stop. 
Yeah, but uh, look at Cameron. With his super early pit stop, he made a 13 second gap to everyone else, basically. Yeah, it's uh, um, so far looking very, very good for Cameron Roger. But, but considering he still has to do another pit stop and Jordi Zwiers for sure is going to go for the one stop. Yeah, well, Jordi, Jordi has to do, has to go for one stop to get a chance winning this race, basically. And uh, considering Cameron did nine or eight laps on the supers in his first stint, you would say he's going to pit in another nine laps. Yeah, and Tom Olming are now pretty close to Joao Pitaus down the camera straight. Yep. It's the DRS. Let's see who has the better top speed. Rumi Tissing as well. Oh, the ACR cars have pretty high top speed. Tom Olminger didn't manage to drive past with the EDS open. Yeah, Rumi Tissing managed to get past Tiziano Brioni there. Hmm. Did Matthew Tissing had an incident? He went from P6 to P18. And is nearly left now. Uh, perhaps. Uh, yeah, he pitted. Oh, he, yes, he pitted, but he was like P6, so he shouldn't be this far behind. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> so, come on, Manga. Let's see. Capitais also hasn't stopped yet on the medium tires he started. But uh, no, Tom Wallenmanger way too far back to make the move. At least for now, obviously, he gets a good run out of uh, the bus stop and out of La Source. Might be able to make the move. Oh, there was an incident in the pit lane with Tucson. Um, that's an interesting one. So, he came into the pit lane. Uh, let me check this again. He came into the pit lane and uh, Balash Kalia was pitting and he has the pit box right in front of Balash. And as soon as he was like going into his pit box and breaking, Balash started moving, then tacked his rear tires. Um, he had a little spin. Then when Balash went going again, Tucson reversed it to Balash and um, yeah, he lost a massive amount of time there. Tom Wallemanger managed to get past. Let's see if we can have a look at that uh, incident. Um, I think I found it. So here we go, Massachusetts. Coming into the pit lane. Carefully. Hits the marks. A bit too much on the pit limiter. Then, as you can see there, the netrex of Lotz Galliari in front of him. Pitting. Matthew Tucson coming up behind him, then realizes there's the box in front of him. Palaz Galliar slightly tapped Matthew Tucson. Then Matthew tried to reverse into him. And he's a bit in a yeah, difficult situation. Has to do a, a 70 point turn. I'm pretty sure if you did this on your driving license, you wouldn't pass. Um, but he managed to get into his pit box eventually uh, it took some time yeah yeah and Cameron oh, no. now within a second of uh, your spheres in front going up through a rouge onto the camel straight would probably be an easy move although Cameron runs a bit wide there but too much too much curb on the inside but yeah he's gaining goes up the inside for the braking zone and makes the move stick. Yeah, Cameron Roger back into the lead. He's gonna have to do another stop, but so has Jordi Zwiers. So... Um, yeah, basically, unless something uh, magical happens, uh, not much can get into the way of Cameron Rogers' victory here from now on.
And I think if Jody stays out like one or two laps more, he can take the super softs until the end and we'll have basically a P2. Because I think most of the guys behind him have to pit again except Joao. Yeah. Uh, Joao, you have to pit him. He hasn't pitted at all. Oh, no, yes, he did. He put mediums on, didn't he? He started a medium. Oh, really? Yeah, he hasn't pitted. Oh. Oh, I thought he already did a bit, so never yeah, mind. Yeah, he started from the from the pits, so ah. got him on medium tires. Um, still, relatively good job so far. Twenty seconds from the lead, but with a pit stop, he's gonna drop back to eleven. Yeah, so Paramaros Paramaros uh, Sarantides with an early second pit stop. He's actually on his third we're set gonna of. We're gonna melee on Felix, sorry to. Uh, I'm gonna cut you there, but it was a physical pass to Caramelio. Look at Caramelio now in P8. After he yep. started from pole position. Paramaros on his third set of super softs. Wow. So he's going for a three stop. And pro. Interesting. And taking a look at his teammate, he will probably. Uh, Pit this lap as well. He's on the second set of of super softs, and we'll take another one. Again, I would say both did like around nine or eight laps on these um, super softs every stint. So it looks like they might have a bit of a uh, bit of a wear problem on these tires. Yeah, and as I said, Costas got on the Mardis pitting as well, and he will take the super softs again. Uh, maybe not necessarily, because he hasn't. Perhaps it was a misclick. Uh, oh yeah, he wasn't uh, yeah. soft. He's on the soft. Yeah, these stuff um, should go to the end easily. Yeah. For sure. Already has a four second gap now almost to uh, Jordi Zwiers. Both have to stop again. Probably will be doing so in the next few laps. And Cameron is pitting. Uh, he's for taking of softs again. Yeah. That's... Huh. Well, it's a safe call, I would say. 14 laps or 13 laps. Go. Um, you could say it's possible on the supers. We've seen uh, people do it on supers already in the race, but... Yeah, well, actually, you only did 11, 11 laps on softs um, on this last set, so... I guess that's expected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also... The only guy that's facing competition compared to him is Jordi Zwiers. Um, still hasn't pitted on his set of soft tires. Amazing first him, 21 laps now. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he comes in um, this lap and takes the supers to the end. Maybe he can even um, have a battle with Cameron for the lead. Perhaps. The gap was only 3.5 seconds. He do 4 seconds. He takes supers and he see if he's four tenths, five tenths a lap quicker. Perhaps, perhaps, with ten laps to go, might be possible.
Pelt of Reese lining up a pass on Delphi Dice. Jao also still hasn't pitted on his tires. Started on the mediums. 21 laps now, Jorge Zwiers. Into the pits. To the pit line he goes. Let's see, Tom Oldmenger stays out. Uh, Roma Tissing might go to the end on this soft. Actually, when did Roma pit? He pitted lap 14. Already he indeed might. onto the supers. So he's yeah. going he, to take he... the fight, but he's... Oh. Is he? Yeah, he's behind. Look at Amelio. Oh. Did Cameron get past Amelio in his lap or did he just rejoin in front of him? I think he rejoined in front. Yeah. He's five, nearly five seconds out of Galof. Um, I think Roma might go to the end on these softs. And this might actually... Well, he's pretty much in the battle for P1, P2 and P3 there. Cameron is right behind him. Roma is the, the net leader right now, I would say. I think Tom Oldemenger has to pit again, and Roma doesn't. Yeah. Yeah, unless Tom Oldemenger somehow manages to do 24 laps on a soft, soft tire. But I don't think that's going to happen, considering he only did 9 on a super soft. Uh, but yeah, Rumor did 14 on a super soft, and now 7 on a soft, so... Uh, it would be logical that he is able to do 19 in total on soft. So this is going to get interesting here at the end of the race. 11 laps to go. And three different strategies that work. Yeah, and Roma's times are not bad. In, in the current lap, he was a bit slower in sector 1 than Cameron. 10th slower in sector 2 than Cameron. So it's not... The stars are not too bad right now. And Tom Oldmenger is pitting. Alright. Jody Sears is in the DS right now for uh, Luca Di now. He's already gaining loads of loads of time there down the straight. This will be an easy move again. Luca tries to defend to the inside, but um, yeah, Jody just goes yeah. past him with the Fine DS. Past. Rheumatising also uh, made a move on Gerloff. Or tried to make a move on Gerloff, I believe. But no, didn't... actually he got, he got passed by uh, Kevin. Oh, Kevin. alright. Did, I wonder, Sorry. did Roma make made a mistake because there was like there was you get more than one second, I think. Yeah. Uh, replay, let's go. Um Yeah, I don't know. Actually not. It's I think it's just Cameron's top yeah, speed. Yeah, just Cameron top, top speed. Is there amazing top speed around the outside. Of course he has the fresher tires compared to Roma. Yeah. I saw Roma um Overtaking some some back markers around the west of Chicane, so he might have lost a bit of time there. Perhaps, to yeah. Let Cameron mm -hmm. catch up. Oh yeah, Roma, if he manages to stay in the the S window of Cameron, he pretty much is securing P2 right now. Yeah. Yeah, let's see, Yori. About to hit the DRS win now, Gallop the Freeze. He's 1.1 second behind Gallop um, down the finish straight. Let's see if he gets the DRS here. I think he should be close enough next up to overtake Gallop and get into P3 there. Yeah, no DRS this lap, but next lap surely he will have DRS uh, onto Gallop. Jordi's also went purple in the last lap, 43.2, that's nearly a second faster than anyone on the track right now. 
only other people in the 43s are Tiziano Brioni and Cameron Roger. In the back of the mix. Last guy to pit for today, I think. One left to go. No, actually, Polomaros needs to use a harder compound. Oh, yeah. yeah that's true. <laughs> Yeah, Roma's tires are in good shape. He's green sector one, green sector two. So I think still personal the best on ten level tires. Yeah, just needs to manage the gap now. Jordi Sears will have the arrest this lap around. A good run out of uh, a Rouge Radion. DRS opens and gets past uh, roughly uh, before the end of the straight. Nicely done there. Up to the podium he goes. Now he will be starting to hunt down Roman Tissing and Cameron Roger with nine laps to go. His pace is uh, not much quicker, of course. He was behind uh, Gerloff, so. Not really representative. His fastest lap on this stint is um, about a second quicker than what Rumor did last lap. So if he can keep up that pace, back in the lap, nine laps, he will be oh, right behind two, uh, Rumor Tissing and uh, catching up to Cameron Warder. So let's see what he is uh, able to do here. Costa uh, Garnamatis um, is catching up to Joao Pitaes. What did Joao take? Uh, I don't know, actually, Joao just overtook Costas at the end of the cover straight, I think. The moment is also closing up to uh, Luca Medio. Yes, he is. Close to the back of Luca Medio. At the exit of. The bus stop coming into La Source. Moldering and knows that Luca Ramelli doesn't have much top speed down the Camel Straight, so he just makes the move before La Source already. And probably will be safe down the straight. Gonna have to wait and see though. Perhaps Luca Ramelio has some juice left in the tank. Try and get back on Tom Moldermanger. The ERS opens. He's and scanning a bit, he's but only a, a tiny bit. bit. It is far from enough to make a make an overtaking move, and uh, yeah, really shows that in the race, the lower wings don't seem to be working, or the the higher wing settings don't seem to be working really. Yeah, you can also save a lot more fuel with lower wings, so um, people with lower wings, uh, lower wings basically have more fuel in the end to defend or attack. That's also a disadvantage for Luca. Yeah. And we have a little uncheck battle with uh, Thomas Lenz and Balash Galia right now. Battle for P12. Last lap, Jordi Sviers um, gained almost a second on the rumor testing. Cameron Roger, though, is keeping up the pace. Only two tenths slower than uh, Jordi Sviers last lap. And Balat Caliar, he's gonna try and make the move. Trying to make a move into the bus stop side by side on breaking. Pretty 
easy move there from Balash goes up the inside. Has enough overlap before the turn in to make a safe move. I have to watch out for the uh, camel straight though. Sure if he has the top speed to defend. But uh, already made quite a big of a gap at the exit of the uh, last source hairpin there. Now up the radion. Thomas Lenz already gaining. DRS will open here. It's like. It's like uh, Balaz Galliar is just standing still. Down the inside he goes. But uh, Balaz Galliar. Breaks very early. early. Yeah. I, I think Thomas breaked very early there. Oh. Alright. So. Careful there from Thomas Lenz. But. Uh, we'll lose him out on a position. Oh. Uh. Now Jordi Zwiers, again, gonna gain roughly a second here this lap. And see rheumatizing now. Always nice to have something in your sight to hunt for. between them is now roughly two seconds. Last lap gained over a second there. 1.3 seconds compared to Rune Pussy. But this is gonna be exciting. Six laps to go. And the audience viewers has got the pedal on the floor. The pedal on the floor. And he's pushing hard to catch up to Rune Pussy. And Palomaros just did his final pit stop onto the softs finally for the last uh, five laps, six oh, laps. Oh, oh, oh! Jordi Swears made a mistake in Kuhon there. Went a bit wide, hit the gravel trap. Lost uh, probably a couple of tents there. Not uh, more. He won't be helping him. Oh, and in track, Rimet's DNF with an engine issue? Did he use too much quality boost? Perhaps. Could be the case. Well, his engine is definitely blown on the replay. Where did it happen? Yep. I think he did. Let's go for the is replay. Engine blue coming out of the bus to GK. Yep, flames out of the back. End of the race for the network driver. With five laps to go, that's a uh, tough pill to bite through. But uh, yeah, no. nothing you can do about it. Ayori's rears. One second to rumor tissing. Uh, also, 24 hours of the is just about to end. 24 hours are done. Leaders are coming to the start finish line there soon. He's gonna make the move. Already down the inside of the bus stop chicane. Nothing oh, he can do really. Rheumatising has to give up second place there. Now, four laps to go. 
four seconds between Cam and Roger and Jordi Spheres. Or, uh, yeah. So, uh, let's go. <laughs> Come on, Jordi, you can do it. Um, last lap. Oh, Cameron made a mistake somewhere. He did a 146.0 when he was doing 43s consistently. Uh, it was one and a half seconds slower than what Jordi Spears did last uh, lap. Yeah. So, perhaps, perhaps Jordi... Didn't have any off track, so... Hmm. Kind of. Yeah, I can't see any off tracks of Cameron. Maybe just a mistake somewhere, yeah. Let's see what his middle sector is. I'll keep a look on his onboard. His tire is still looking pretty good, I think. Uh, Yordi nearly a second faster in the middle sector. Yeah, so this is gonna get exciting. I think perhaps Cameron already uh, destroyed his tires too much. He was pretty, pretty quick in the first couple of laps. Perhaps he just over pushed uh, the tires in the first uh, part of his stint. And now has to uh, accept that his tires aren't that good anymore. Gap is down to 3.1 second. Jordi nearly a second faster in the last lap. So three laps to go. Four laps to go, actually. No, Jordi. Two laps to go from now on. So a second per lap means that Jordi is on onto Cameron's back in the last lap. Yeah. Cameron also gets a bit of traffic now in the second sector. This could have hurt him a little bit. Actually, the Tom Hollinger, they are also still battling. Tom Hollinger just got past Tail of the Reef down the Camel straight. So the two stop of Tom Hollinger working out nicely compared to the one stop of Tail of the Reef. And look at Emilio, also, has also lost the position to the Alpi tires now. So. Starting from pole position, without much actual mistakes or bad luck, look at Amelio just roughly on pace and lack of top speed has lost eight positions. Cameron picked up the pace a little bit. Yordi only three turns faster um, through sector two. Yeah. Hopefully the same lap time from them uh, this lap, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, coming even faster than Yodi last lap. Indeed, two tenths quicker. So with that, I think it's uh, done for Yodi's rears. Two laps to go, three and a half seconds. Gonna be uh, very tough to catch up to him and also get past. They both have the higher top yeah. speed. Actually, Roma needs to focus the last two laps. Aldermenger is catching him very fast right now. Yep. And there's the only a two and a half second gap. Yeah, once again, Jordi Spears didn't gain much. He could, did gain 7 tenths in the middle sector, but that's oh. not enough. Yeah, but 
first and last sector of Cameron are always um, faster than Jordi's. Yeah, we're on the last lap now. With a three second gap. Cameron uh, seems to be safe. From Oldermanger. Also uh, too far back uh, to the position to be able to do something. I think this might be Cameron's first win in the FSR. If I'm not mistaken. Is it not? Are you sure? Did you? Pretty sure he did. Let's Let me check. Let me check. Uh, Polomaro Salamitidis. He is uh, also close. To, uh, almost lands in front of him. Actually, no, he didn't. Nope. No, nope. that's my mistake. I thought he uh, did in uh, 2016. So yeah, why uh, that will be his uh, first win in the Formula Sim Racing Pro Championship. So Cameron Roger coming through Blanchimont. Last two corners for him. After 52 official Formula Sim Racing races that he participated in. Cameron Roger takes victory for the first time here at the Circuit de Spa Francorchamps. Um, <laughs> as he uh, manages to almost crash the car at the finish line. And uh, I believe that's uh, instant race ban, if yep, you do so. Yeah, it is. So uh, luckily he didn't. But um, yeah, definitely a very well-driven race by Cameron, Roger and the flag, the flag boys here. Jordi Spears takes home P2. Rumertissing takes the third position and the final podium place here. Tom Ondermenger in P4. Geil of the Vries, P5. Giano Brioni in P6. Jaupita is in P7 after starting from the pit lane. And Luca De Melio after starting from pole position in P8. So uh, that's quite a big difference uh, between those guys. Starting from the pit lane and starting from pole position. Uh, you can see what uh, what a bad race uh, Luca De Melio has actually had. Then Costas Galamatis, P9. Mirko Lupini in P10. Colomaro Salantides in P11. Thomas Lenz, P12. Balas Galliard in P13, and Gerard Batala finishes in P14. Roder Pongwef in P15, Matthew Tussen will be finishing in P16. Last corner for him. And he finishes in P16. And then the wait is for Jan Posnika as he comes through the last corner to finish his race in P17 outside of the points. But definitely driver of the day here, or driver of the um, of the day in the Pro Championship is Cameron Roger. First victory, uh, definitely well deserved. Yeah, pretty good race by Cameron, Jordi, Hiroma, all of the top 10 really. Yeah. So, I think it is time for us to start closing off the broadcast. We've had a uh, exciting race once again today. Definitely a, a very exciting race. Uh, lots of overtakes, a uh, couple of crashes, a couple of incidents, uh, but that's always bound to happen in the lower categories. The Ace Championship will be starting in roughly 1 hour and 15 minutes. So make sure you tune into that if you're not uh, too sleepy after watching uh, the Le Mans series uh, for 12, uh, 24 hours straight. Um, otherwise, take a, take a quick nap. You have about 1 hour and 15 minutes. Um, after that, after the Ace Championship, we will of course have the main event of the day, the World Championship. Um, Michele D'Alessandro still leading the championship there. Um, let's see what he will be able to do at this uh, circuit of, the, uh, of Spa-Francorchamps. 
Anyway, it's time for us to close off here for the Pro Championship. Make sure to tune in for the Ace Championship in one hour and 15 minutes. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.